Hello everyone, I'm back with a new video and in this one we'll be talking about EV Dev. First, what does EV Dev actually do? EV Dev allows you to switch your mouse and keyboard between your host and your guest operating systems. Let's say you are working in your host operating system and you want to switch to your guest operating system. You only have one mouse and one keyboard. What you do is you press the left and right control buttons at the same time and that switches your mouse and keyboard to your guest operating system. You keep working there and then when you press it your mouse and keyboard revert back to the host and so on and so forth. This allows you to only have one mouse and one keyboard. You don't have to have two sets, one for the guest, one for the host. This significantly simplifies setting up a virtual machine. You don't have to rely on uh, USB ports that can be passed through or USB controllers that can be passed through and you can work in both your guest and your host machine simply by switching. You still need two monitors or you need to switch inputs between the guest and the host. So in this video we'll try to use an automated script to get EVDev working with our virtual machine. This video is based on a guide by pass through post and uh, it's linked in the video description. So let's get started. Let's download EV Dev Helper. The link will be in the video description. Let's go to code, download zip, and let's save it. Next, we'll go to downloads and unzip it. Extract here, and now we'll have to execute it. So let's open our terminal and let's change into downloads and EV Dev Helper. And let's make run underscore EV helper executable. So chmod plus x to make it executable and run EV helper. Okay, and now we can run it. We'll have to run it as sudo. It edits the qemu.conf file, so that's why it needs sudo permissions. Enter. And this was successful. If you read the messages, no changes were made to QEMU conf. It first attempts to remove any previous changes made by this script and there were none. So no changes were made. Then it actually modifies it. And at the end, exports any results we'll need later into evdev.txt. So this is done. This is ready. Now we'll need to open our virtual machine manager. And if you run this while virtual manager is open, it will shut it down and you will have to reopen virtual machine manager. That's not a bug. It just reboots the libvirt service. So that's normal if you run it while virtual machine manager is open. Okay, next we'll need to open our virtual machine and go to details and edit XML. As far as XML goes, uh, you need to have XML editing enabled. So if you go here and preferences, enable XML editing, this needs to be checked. Otherwise you won't be able to edit it. You do not have to use my guides uh, to install the virtual machine. It should work with any functioning virtual machine really. You don't even have to run Manjaro as the host. Uh, it should run under any other Linux distribution. So I'm just running it because I have Manjaro installed right now. Okay, so let's go back to editing. Let's open this. And what we'll need to do is go back to wherever we downloaded it. And we'll need to open evdev.txt. This is what you will have to paste into your XML. So first domain type KVM. This has to be copied and pasted. This basically enables any modification we'll make to the XML to stick uh, because we are passing some QEMU commands that normally wouldn't work in this setup. If you want to know more about this, read the pass-through post uh, guide that's posted in the description. Okay, let's, so let's uh, paste it. When you paste this, you also have to paste the command line arguments. If you don't, and you just apply it without doing anything else, this is what happens. So let's apply and it just reverts back to KVM. So you need to paste it. Then you need to go here 
and do the command line arguments. Okay, scroll down, and those go at the almost at the very end, just above domain. So just between devices and domain, and then you apply it. So this sticks, and this sticks. So they don't disappear. But if you only do the very top one first, the domain XMLNS, it will disappear if you apply it without doing the QME command line. OK, so now that this is done, we can run the virtual machine. So I'll run the virtual machine. And first thing that happens, I right now, if I move the mouse in the host, it doesn't move because it has been taken over by the guest. So let's switch over to the guest. I have to change the HDMI. OK, so here I am in the guest. And when I open a text document, I can type. As you can see, I can move the mouse. I can type. And when I press the left and right control buttons at the same time, now I should transfer the mouse control and the keyboard control to the host. So if I move the mouse now, nothing happens. I'm typing, nothing happens. Let me switch back to the host. And here is my mouse. I can type in the description, erase it. So simple. You use the two control buttons that are on your keyboard to transfer from one to another. That's all there really is to it. The only additional things to remember, if you if it stops working, let's say, you might want to run run evhelper.sh again, and it will generate new set of commands that you need to input. Basically, these are the devices. And if you don't want certain devices to be captured by EV dev, you can just erase them. Let's say you uh, right now I it shows two keyboards, right? Keyboard one, keyboard two and one mouse. Let's say you only want uh, and they are actually the same keyboard. It's the same keyboard. It's just two instances. It's uh, the script that tries to find devices. It just tries to find everything it can and throws it into that uh, file. So if you know certain keyboards, you don't want them to be passed through. You can just, let's say, delete them. Let's say, you know, you don't want this one. You would uh, select it and delete it. And then you would just copy and paste those. So that's one thing. And now another thing, let me close this, uh, don't save. By default, this is trying to find devices by ID. Sometimes for uh, different reasons, you might want to do it by path. So you can do the same, run EV dev helper and you do by path. And when you do, you don't have to really worry about it, but if you are somebody who knows you want to do it by path, in some cases, it discovers more devices than actually just by ID. So. If you want to do it this way, this is an option, and the script will generate a similar file, but everything will be by path. By path, and then qemu.conf is also modified to reflect that. So if we check the very end where it basically deals with permissions, everything is by path. When you don't do it, it will be by ID. So shouldn't matter to most people but if you know you want to do this you have the option also if you run into trouble and you keep getting errors when trying to launch the ev dev helper or when you try to launch the virtual machine and it tells you you are lacking certain permissions what sometimes i try to prevent it when writing this script so it shouldn't happen but sometimes this can get if you see this in there twice. So let's say the C group device ACL, if this access control list is there twice, it will not work. So if that's the problem, you just want to go in there, sudo etc libvirt, and you might want to just delete it. Keep pressing D to delete it. 
and when you're done colon wq and you can run the script again run ev helper and it will regenerate it for you and we'll see right now when we don't do by path it's by id for those of you who are interested in the finer details you have this option for everybody else just forget about this and if you want to troubleshoot this even further read the pass-through post guide he goes into many of the finer details and how to do this manually so if you have trouble read that that should help for everybody else i hope this has been helpful and this simplifies evdev and i hope to see you in the next video